people of the world join hands and start a love train love train my govan and melanine and well met indeed i am out of here garland earthen and welcome back to middle earth as we continue on as dole amroth the best nation in the game dole amroth there is no camera again let me just remind you this week there's almost certainly not going to be a camera any day because it is literally melting here in the united kingdom we're going through one of our worst heat waves ever because every year year on year unfortunately the heat waves are worse than the year before because that's what happens when the planet warms up and whether or not you disagree with the reasons why the planet might be warming up or whether or not you disagree with the whole thing it is literally getting hotter every single summer so um, we're now at the point where you just simply can't deny the actual event. We are literally getting hotter. You might still deny the reason why we're getting hotter. Or you might disagree with the reason that is put forward by many as why we're getting hotter. But you simply cannot dispute that it is literally getting hotter. Uh, and so here we are melting away in the United Kingdom. Uh, but he will cry, Gallo, what are you moaning about? You've got degrees of about, you've got about 30 degrees. I don't know what that is in Fahrenheit, but it'll be high. Um, we got about 30 degrees. What are you moaning about? We regularly get that in, in insert Mediterranean or equatorial country here. But your countries are designed to be hot. England is designed to be cold. So our houses are built exclusively to retain heat, which means that if it's 30 degrees outside, it's often unbearably boiling inside because our house is doing all that it's designed to do to keep that heat in. So it's sweltering. So I'm not on the camera. And you'll have to live with it. We are playing as Dole Amroth. We are currently, as you can see, attacking Ballad Hunt. We're trying desperately to make money. The same thing we're doing in the Bree campaign. Um, we're hoping to actually earn some good money before we move out and do anything too extreme. So we recently fended off an attack at Gobel Tophilus and we lost a custom general there, which was a bit disappointing. But otherwise, as you can see, we actually are not doing too badly financially. And we're just trying to get some regions while we can with our forces. We have two real options as Dole Amroth. We either build a mega army, sail down to Umbar, take Umbar and hope that we can hold it for a long time or we just slowly creep our way across Arondor. in any event we will have to be defending up here in Lynn here uh, for at least a little while if we go for the umber plan then we'll be defending up here for a long time if we go for the slowly spread across then we won't be which is why i'm tempted to go with the slowly spread across because that isn't actually something that i often do when i play as when i've played as dole amroth i've played as dole amroth on the channel one time fully and then another time where you just caught the end of a dole amroth campaign and that was quite literally the first um let's play video on the channel hence why we're playing as dole amroth again now uh, in the one that I actually played Dol Amroth in full, though, we did sail to the Ardenheim capital, if memory serves. Uh, and, we, I mean, we I believe we won. I don't really remember. Most campaigns don't tend to end with victory because I get bored before the end. Um, but I'm fairly certain we did sail to Umbar and we, we spread out from down there, which meant we did hold up here for a while, but I don't really know. Anyway, Gobel Tophilus just built something. A meeting hall, which was designed to give us more free upkeep. And it worked splendidly. Um, we're going to chuck those coastal wardens yes. into the fort so that we keep the free upkeep going. We've got 2,644 gold coins. Lynn here is going to build a port on the next turn, so we won't build anything because we'll see what that's going to do. Zellin's building farmland. Methras can't do out. And Dole Amroth could if we wanted. But realistically, we should try and get the mining network up and running, but that is a lot of turns of saving up. But the port in Lynn here is a good shout, so we'll go with that. We've got Mariners! our two um, Mariners of the Fleet. Mariners of the fleet. And with them, we will ensure the safety in the seven seas. Yes, sir. It's difficult to way. actually control the seas, though, because That's boats safe. can move so far in Divide and Conquer oh, no. um, that a unit that is currently down here in the Fog of War can just bypass our fleet entirely and end up up here. So, And also, ships can leave blockaded ports, which I've always found absolutely moronic. Um, so it is My very Lord. difficult to keep yes. uh, naval dominance. Discuss? It's good to see another proposition. And how about paying me for my map information? I think 600 gold coins wouldn't come amiss. Yes. Acceptable until we meet Acceptable. again. Acceptable. And we got an alcohol. Oh, God, no. Ships ready. We got a ship for that. We got a ships ship ready. for that. Ah. Uh, I don't Mariners. want more ships, eh? I want Find troops on the say. ground. Food for boots on no the ground. ground. 30. Uh, right, Beragond, who should we send you off to sell our map information to next? Have we spoken to Isengard yet? 
We've got map information with Isengard. Oh, Rohan, you're not at war with Isengard. Does that mean Isengard doesn't have any enemies or allies? Where are you, Isengard? Dunland, there we are. Trade rights have already been set up, so we've probably spoken to them. So let's go and talk to the Misty Mountain. Without question. Stopping here. They always want your trade, your map information. Doesn't matter where you are, who you are, or what you're Best doing. They always, order. always want your map information, and I will gladly give it them. Uh, right, end of turn. Let's get that port in here built. Build those ports. Last episode and the episode before was very uncharacteristic for me to just go on an absolute tirade against a certain person, um, and I apologise. Not specifically to them, but to uh, all of you for bringing the mood and the tone down terribly. But on the other hand, I also don't apologise because um, we're at the end now. Do what you like. A new family member. Kolfindir. Someone did ask, Galu, what is the reason that you actually oh, like Bree so much? Um, with the Olamroth, I can understand with the crash of heavy cavalry hitting into the enemy. Always looks and feels fantastic. But what it is about Bree that draws you in so much? And the answer is that Bree... It's a difficult one to actually pin down, but in a in a in an attempt at a simplistic terms, Bree is such an underdog for one, but the main reason is that it feels like such a nice sleepy little homely corner of Middle Earth, and playing in and around this area just feels more enjoyable to me. Uh, and I don't know why that is. Um, but having the Shire under your control and building up in the sleepy Bree land just appeals to me in um, a great many ways. Um, I think we should actually try and get that Master Mason's Hall because we can build it on the next turn and then that will bring down the cost of everything else so much more. And Dol Amroth is going to have so many buildings built in it that I think that is actually the the play, you know, the play. Um, with the simple money we're going to get there though, if you build that leather farm, that will still build the um, quarters up there. We've got another two turns on Barad Han. And then Barad Han will fall. Some of you have also expressed further um, interest in... I Originally, before I came to the conclusion that I could actually just end the channel, um, I was talking about doing a video where I went around the world and explained what all of the things mean, what all of the place names mean. Um, and some of you ex have, My Lord. have expressed um, yes. delight about with that question. idea, but also asked yes. that I take it a step further As and go wish. around the DAC world and explain what the places and names mean and why certain towns are called what they're called and give backstory. They said that it was very interesting to learn about places like Brown Boat, for example, and why it was called Brown Boat until it was recently renamed. And um, just learning all about the place names in Divide and Conquer. And whilst I would enjoy, I'm sure, doing something of that nature, I can't commit to any video ideas any longer. I've also seen someone say, how much time a week can it actually take up to do YouTube videos? Surely you could just pre-record a batch on a Saturday and just set them to go up each day in the week. And to you, I would simply say that my reasoning for leaving YouTube behind is not because I don't have the time, because of course I can find 30 minutes here, there and everywhere. It's because, quite simply, I don't want to do it anymore and I now earn enough money in my normal job that the money that YouTube does make me, which actually has not been insignificant, is no longer required. But the main reason, the financial one is only a minor side point, the main reason is I just do not want to record anymore. After I've spent a day working in my now proper and actually taxing job and I come home of an evening, I don't want to then have to sit down and be entertaining for 40 straight minutes. I want to do nothing. I want to chat to Jess about my day and moan about clients that have annoyed me or and talk about things that I thought went well in my day and then I'll listen to Jess do the same and then we'll just spend time together and enjoy our evening relaxing doing nothing. And similarly, at the weekends, when I then don't have to work, I want to maximise my freedom to do whatever I bloody well want to. If we want to go on a walk, if we want to go to a museum, if we want to go into London, if we want to go and do anything, I'm free to do it. And I don't have to think, oh, but when am I going to do my recording this week? How am I going to fit that in? Um, so that's a, a part of it as well. But the, the main and core and chief reason, the biggest thing above all else, is that I just don't want to do it anymore. It is as simple as that. I have lost my desire to do it. Um, and that alone is, a, is reason enough. 
I know that many of you are very disappointed and you um, one would hope that all 50,000 of you, although let's let's be real here, whilst there are 50 something thousand of you subscribed, most of my videos get maybe 4,000 views. So the 4,000 core viewers of you, the names that spring up time and time again, those of you that I see over and over, I'm sure you'll be very disappointed that I'm leaving. Um, and of course I would be able to do the odd video every now and then. Of course there'd be a weekend where I think, you know what, actually I fancy doing a video today. Uh, and of course I could do that. But that just won't work. YouTube is entirely based and success on YouTube and people wanting to watch my videos, which is the ultimate metric. Obviously, I've mentioned the money there. We'll talk about that again in a moment. But the main... I've never been in YouTube for the money. I've said that many times over. The money has been an, a very nice perk. And you might be surprised to learn that even my seemingly small channel actually does earn quite a lot of money. Um, I'm not going to tell you exactly how much, obviously. But mostly because YouTube does expressly state when you sign up to their... Um, when you get to the point where you can start earning money, you have to sign uh, an agreement with them, terms and conditions on their AdSense thing. Uh, it is just called AdSense. That's the company that, mod that gives you all the money. Uh, and there is a clause in there that does say you're not supposed to tell anyone how much money you earn, um, which is quite, uh, quite bizarre to me as an English person. Uh, whereas you Americans, unfortunately, have been completely hounded down into nothing by the corporations, and you've been told to believe that not telling other people your salary is actually good for you, news flash for you it isn't they don't want you to tell other people their salary because then they can pay you less and if you happened to find out that someone doing the same job as you was paid more than you you'd be in uproar uh so they got around that by just m making you all believe that it is the way to not talk about how much money you earn uh, it's absolute madness to them to the rest of us well we don't freely talk about how much money we earn in the uk but equally it's not like a thing like oh, they talked about their 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 um how much they're getting paid like if someone does mention it it's just no one bats an eyelid no one cares but anyway that's a holdover from the fact that google is american and so part of the adsense agreement is that you're not supposed to tell anyone how much money you make uh, but also it's just not coming really to mention that here on youtube but it does end me more than you would probably think but money has never been the driving factor for YouTube until about one year ago when I really started to lose my interest of it. Which, as you may or may not have realised from the timeline, was when I stepped away from DAC. In an ideal world, when I stepped away from DAC, I would have stopped YouTube at the same time because I lost my desire for both. But I carried on with YouTube at that point because I simply couldn't turn down the cost-benefit analysis of how much money it made me for how much work I had to put in. Whereas now, I'm at a point where my main job, my, my main job, my actual job, earns me enough money that I feel like I can claim this YouTube time back and not affect my quality of life. So in essence, I, because I'm always the kind of person that will always, um, I value my That's time over much how much money I can earn. I've always been a be um, healthy work-life balance type person. Um, I'm, I leave the office bang on five o'clock. I will, even if I am absolutely overrun, I will do whatever I can to make sure that I get out there when my time ends. Uh, and I consider it a great personal failing if I have to stay behind because I've not done something. Now I'm able to do that because I'm incredibly efficient and I know it's me tooting my own horn again, but I am actually damn good at what I do. Uh, and so I don't need to stay late because I get my work done and I know how a computer works. So it allows me to do very well. So anyway, so about a year ago for YouTube, it then uh, it got to the point where I didn't want to do YouTube anymore, but I could really I couldn't argue. I couldn't I couldn't convince myself um, to stop because of how much the, the money at that point was such a big incentive. So for the past year of YouTube, I have pretty much only been doing it because of the fact that it pays me reasonably good money. But now I've reached a point where I don't need it and the, I can therefore finally accept, or not accept, I accepted a long time ago, I can finally shout out from the rooftops that I don't really want to do this anymore. I'm not interested in it, I don't spend, I don't find enjoyment or fun in doing YouTube anymore. It now feels entirely like a second job to me. Um, and that is why I am stopping, because that will not make for good viewing. I will get ground down and worn down. But not only that, but the videos will just be rubbish. When your heart's not in something, that thing suffers. Um, it stands to reason. And I don't want to go out on a whimper. I want to go out when we were still relatively strong. So that's why I'm putting an end to it. The reason that I've needed the money over the past year is, of course, because I'm going to New Zealand in February of next year for two months. 
And this time we're doing that in style. And whilst I've always been able to pay for New Zealand from the day that we decided we wanted to do it, the more money I have, the more the more stuff we can do and the more um, in the more comfort we can do those things in. So we're all re we're going to be driving around New Zealand for um, we're in New Zealand for five weeks. Uh, but I'm also going to Japan and Singapore and Sydney as well, provided those places will let me in. But um, we wanted to do New Zealand in style. I've been to New Zealand before and before we went for about five weeks as well. Uh, but we had to do that one on a shoestring budget. We were students with no money, so it was staying in hostels. We got a camper van, but it was basically a converted car. There was just no room at all. But now we're doing it in style. And all the money I can now generate will make that YouTube trip ever better. So that's where the incentive has now been. That For the past year, I've been keeping on with YouTube because I just think in my mind, every month that I can keep YouTube earning me some money, that's more money for, to make New Zealand even better. And then thereafter, if we come back from New Zealand with a little bit of money left over, brilliant, that can go into savings or we can do the bathroom or something, I don't know. But I've reached the point where I feel like YouTube takes away from my life more than the finances it puts into it. And that is why I am stopping. I don't want to be a shell of myself doing YouTube because, oh, think of the money, Galu, think of the money. Because that's just so grim. I got into this as a hobby. It's always been a hobby. And the money has always just been a happy side effect. That's why I don't ask you to like and subscribe. I don't put clickbait thumbnails. I don't do... Come, I don't join up with other YouTube channels and ask them to try and sell me. I've done nothing to promote my channel, in short. All of the success has been off the back, basically, of DAC. Um, but also just people coming, enjoying and sticking around if they liked it. I don't go out of my way to try and get people to stay around, to subscribe, to share the videos. I don't do all of the things that YouTube wants me to do to make my videos more appealing. Um, I don't cut bits out of the video. I don't make the thumbnails they want. All that kind of stuff. And I have stood by that. Even in this last year where I have only really been in it thinking of like, just think of New Zealand and think of what you can do. Um, I still haven't wanted to, to sell out in that regard. And so that's why I'm going now because once I come back from New Zealand, I then really will have no incentive to do this anymore. Uh, the enjoyment and the love of it has gone. The connection to DAC went, obviously, a year ago when I stepped away from DAC. So I don't want to be forcing myself to churn out this content. The content will suffer, and also I just don't want to do it anymore. And it is as simple as that. And some of you will be sitting there and thinking, what? That's madness. You're basically turning down free money that you get for just playing a game. Why would you turn that down? Um, but I don't to be blunt and again to unfortunately toot my own horn this has been two episodes of me just singing my praises i earn damn good money for a person of my age and i don't need youtube's investment anymore and i have the added benefit that the money that i earn from my actual job is secure sometimes youtube pays me lots of money i'm and i mean a lot of money i mean well, i mean i don't know what you have my amount you have in your head but sometimes it pays me twice as much as it does on average but then other times it pays me half as much as it does on average it's not something that you'd want to do as a job there's no security youtube could one day decide to change their ad policies and all of a sudden this whole thing comes crashing down so it's always it's always a gamble to be honest uh, so i would never would have done it full time oh let's get a meeting hall up here um, and try and get some free upkeep we might as well try and keep baradhan Interestingly, Gobel Mirland has not yet fallen to the Ardenaeum. Uh, and I feel like we should capitalise on that and sail past it, leave it rebel, and try and take Vinya um, Forestar, I believe it's called. Yeah, Khaldun. Um, it's just Harad. We border Harad now, so they're going to come at us. I'd really like Baradhan to actually be built up to be of use. Uh, similarly with Tirithoros, but Tirithoros is just in the wrong place. Tirithoros should always have been here. So that it could properly guard the straits. But because it's over there, it's in such a useless position. And with Canned coming up here, we're already at the point where we're going to be fighting all three of them. So I don't know what we're going to do. I don't know what we're going to do. Obviously, in days gone by, everything that I've just explained to you, I never would have spoken to you about. Because it's all unreal. But now, now, <laughs> it doesn't matter. I'm going. I'm leaving. So I appreciate it. some of you will just think like, God, that just sounds so lazy. It'd be my dream to play games and get paid for it. But let me tell you, when there's a pressure on you to play the games that you've enjoyed, it takes so much of the fun away. Um, and also, I just want to play other games. <laughs> yes, my lord. Where is Austin Without Adil question. and why 
Oh, we're not even in My Dunland Lord. yet. Oh, God. As you in, wish. Sorry, I'm in the I wrong bloody region. Tomorrow. No wonder we haven't found Austin. Calamere, can I ask what you think you're doing? Why are you wandering through my lands? A bugger off, sir. A bugger off. We are making good money, actually. We should definitely capitalise. What are your mines going to cost? Oh, similar. Let's get a Master Mason tool there as well and get mines up there. Um, and while we're at it, why don't we just chuck them in in all places? They, they, the bonuses that they do give in the long run are now actually fairly substantial. So we'll, we won't build anything else then. We'll let those three build. Because in two turns, your mines are going to be ready. And in two turns, I think we will actually be able to build those mines. So we will hold hey, that. Let's just go build Mirland. If we can... Um, I'd love to take the Ardenaim out and hit Harad from there. But we don't have any garrison up here. So it could backfire completely. Uh, and that's the Ships gamble. Right. We could always sail down and try and hit uh, Finabel. But I don't think we have an army, a strong enough army to do that. I also don't really want to bite off more than I can chew just yet. Protect the blood of Numenor. So I'm not really sure what the best Burners course the of fleet. action here is. Yes, sir. Yeah, we can fighting. try and block crossings, though. I don't know how Burners successful that will be. I could take all the boats out, uh, but then that makes them susceptible to attack. You, but if we can keep enemy. the Ardenaim penned in there, we can hit Harad hard and fast. Captain of Gons, maintain order. Um, why don't Protect you... Hop out of here and head into this region. Let's, let's see if we can't take Rondor first. I just really don't want Canned. We fought against Canned, obviously, a lot in the um, Reunited Kingdom campaign. Uh, all of our southern fighting was against Canned because we allied the Ardenaim and Harad only attacked us, what, once or twice when they sailed to Methrast? So I'm very much over fighting Canned. Very, very much. So if we can keep it to Harad and... It's the Ardenai we want to fight, really. They're good fun to fight because they actually are as good as us. The so they give you a fight. They give you a challenge. Uh, speaking of which, hello, Fakima. Your corpse will be thrown to the dogs. Fakima? Your corpse will be thrown to the dogs. Uh, Isengard and Enid White are at war. And Dolgaldor and Dale are at war. And Baradhan built its little meeting thing. 6,159 gold coins. Oh, you're about to go into your own boat. That or you're about to blockade my port and start war with me. That would be an interesting one. I think we should be able to build that on the next turn because it takes the building cost reduction up to 25%. 8,500 is 1,700. No, just half it and then half it again. 2,250. Yeah, 4,200. No, 4,250. So 2,100 and something. 2001, 4,125, 2,125. It will drop it down to about just over 6,000, which we might just about be able to build. Ah, we've made it to the Missy Mountains. Oh, we can sell our map information to them and then we should be able to build it. And then if we wait two more turns, Methras can get its mines um, because then obviously in two turns, its Mason's Hall will be built. And then that's good. That's a good 600 gold added to the coffers. Oh, Harad. See, that they've just proven uh, my point. Their, their navy has just come out of absolutely nowhere Baroness, to attack our port. The Unfortunately fleet. for them, they've brought a terrible, terrible navy. Yes, sir. So we can keep Full them pinned. There we go. Look, Harad already coming in. Absolutely ridiculous. Um, right, did we make enough? No, we didn't make enough. 6375, and for some reason we didn't even earn enough. But let's sell our map info and then we will be able to. Yes, my lord. So, trade rights, make offer, Do not think map information, like to suggest. 600 gold coins should be enough, but we'll try for 700. Yes. Your plan seems goodbye. Your plan seems goodbye. Dolem Ruth, build me my mines. My mining network will be complete. In two turns, that one will be ready again. Again, I don't think we're going to have enough, but it depends Maintain if we can beat. Marchmen. Oh, Tirithride is currently being besieged. Oh. All right, let's stand by. Stand up on the hill there. That is a bit of a hill, isn't it? Yeah. Captain of stand on the hill. Marchmen. And let's see if they manage to take Tirithride. And if they do, we'll siege them and take it. And if they don't, then we'll siege it and take it ourselves. Oh, you could get a Coastal Warden. I don't think he's going to get to you in time. I don't know what they're going to do. Oh, even if he does, he can't build any siege equipment. So we can always just send the Baroness fleet back the up fleet. and take troops from here. But I will try and build that Coastal Warden because that will be helpful. And actually, I could do with you getting a barracks before Methras worries about its mines. So chuck that barracks in there as well. Even if it is... A <coughs> Sorry. 
at this stage of the game, even if it's just trash that we're adding, uh, we, it, that's worthwhile at the moment. We do. But now we definitely just need troops. Um, but of course, we want to try and get better armies. We don't want to make the mistake I've made in seasons past, where I just build trash for s turn after turn after turn. But the trick, of course, is just to make money. Um, the problem with making money is that it's quite dull. It What's means that you enemy? spend, as we have done, we spend a lot of turns doing essentially nothing while we wait for our eco to pick up, which just isn't entertaining, really, for anyone. And that's that's kind of where we are. Uh, Lynn here, can you chuck in a leather worker? Yeah, go on, what the hell. Two turns, that's an extra 40 little gold coming through. Ooh, very tasty. And you've built your port, which opens up even more trade. And that Haradrim army has moved off, but Umar is coming to take it from us. Because you'll note that Utba, with the new Haradrim generals model, looking very tasty indeed. Kudos to Koma, I believe, who made those. I think it was Koma. Could be someone else. Um, that's a Haradrim army that I don't think we can beat with our casual crappy army. So let's pull away from that. They didn't take Tyr Hathride, though. You may notice the AI managed to hold it. Uh, which is always very nice. I'm pleased that Gobo Milon hasn't fallen because we can then focus entirely on Harad, and that is what we will do. But let's just keep trying to get that money built up. Yeah, the fleet will have to protect us. We can, of course, always just sail to Umbar, but I just don't think it will be very good. It means we'll just be stuck fighting in Lin here forever. Watch for the enemy. What we could do is, with Harad taking Tira Thoros... And then we can hit Harad from the south, which means Cand won't get involved for a while. Mariners of the fleet! Oh, whack us, mate. You already came and, and died. The and there we war. go. He's gone. We are victorious! We are victorious! Retrain that little ship. Right. Now we will save up for the mine. We will save up. So we've got at least two turns until we can then build the mine. But Barad Han... Could do with forces moving it. Well, no, Adrahil's coming weapons. back, isn't he? Adrahil, can you kill I Umar? Waste words on you. I mean, you could fight this. I mean, what is this? <laughs> Madness. Go back and hit Umar instead. Quell this, evil. Quell this evil! Battle is joined! 1,163 trash Haradrim units versus our quite, quite elite army. For the White City! Let us not be praising the White City in this time, for Denethor's mind is of... Darkness. Denethor has toyed with a great and powerful force, and sadly, that force is beating him. Let us not serve the White City, and instead, let us serve the Tirith Ayar, the great watchtower of Dol Amroth. Knights ready! On being all I can be. All right, our cavalry is going to run rings around this pathetic little Haradrim force. Are you going to come at me, Haradrim? Yes, you are, because I've got more archers than you. They've just taken a brief moment to work out whether or not they think they have superiority. They've realised they don't, and so they're moving in. Archers of Dol Amroth, you may no longer be using steel bows of our ancient past, but you are still a power to be feared in this land. Let the men and women of Harad know that they tangle with a beast that they can never hope to tame. We shall crush their very souls. Do you bend to me? Yes, deeper into the bowels. Right, charge those archers. Go, go, go! Right, we'll wait for the Haradrim spears to get locked in melee, and then we'll charge into them with our cavalry. That was an awful charge. That was always going to be a bad charge, though, actually. They're shaken. They're already shaken. The battle is very much in our favour. And they're Victory off. Will be ours. And they're off. It's an absolutely hounding defeat for the forces of Harad in this first engagement in the Southlands. Don't let them get away, because they will come back and fight us again. Let's try and get this over with quickly, the if we can, everyone. Bloody. They have lost half their men. Yeah. 
the enemy general flees right, they're off, like they're off. Is. Press onward and break the behold how our cowardly foe runs. Archers. It's time to press the attack. Cease fire. Enemy general's gone. Adrahil doing what needed to be done. Laying down the law. We lost 8%. They lost 95 That's not to factor in the fact that we will have some of our own units healed. This 76 men victory. fell. 1,000 Haradrim fell. This is what we are dealing with. Utter disgrace on Harad's part. These people consider themselves warriors. They are little more than kindling before the flames of Dol Amro. Kindling indeed. Dun 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 I am once again terribly looking forward to playing Guild Wars after this because I'm about to make my first ever legendary item. It's taken me seven years, but we're on our way. Execute them all, line the roads with the heads of our disgraced enemies. And only then will we shall we find peace in our own land. What we need to do is capitalize on our strengths and build elite cavalry, which Dol Amroth can provide from your stables. How do I go about getting the best stables possible here? It needs a steward's hall, which you can build after your mines then, actually. Can you actually? Can you do that? No, you've only got a governor's quarters. God, you need to upgrade. And sharpish, sir. Sharpish, sir. We've got the Master Masons in Mithrast and the Master Masons in Mithelen. Now, Mithrast, you are going to build me a mining network when you're able. Shipwright wouldn't be a bad idea either, but get the mining network first. And Etheland. Etheland. Nothing for the moment because Mithrast needs its mines first, which is going to take us two turns. Your roads are always a good shout. Well, you could get a Merchant's Wharf as well. 150 flat gold. That's not bad. Because you can't get mines. That's kind of the... You're never going to be a military place. I know that it gets the white, the knight, white knights of Adelan, but uh, it's not the play. It should always be devoted to eco. As you can see, it is quite, quite powerful. Well, actually, no, it's the earns the least after Gobel Total as of our primary nation. <laughs> Dol Amroth burning through the coin. Hello, my name is Dol Amroth. I'm a fortress on the southern coasts of Gondor, and what I do is earn you lots of money. Use me, use me, I cry. Use me well. Dol Amroth should make us money because, let's be honest, it's the best thing about Gondor. The weak and pathetic nobles of Gondor squabble and fight over greater individual glory while the nation burns around them. Boromir knew this oh too well. Gondor have gone to war with Isengard. That's interesting. That is an interesting one. Oh, we're three turns on the barracks, really? Did you build? Oh, yes, Mathrast! Get stuck in, sir. Ethelin, get me a merchant's wharf. Chuck that one in. Nice. Lin here, can we queue anything up for you? Oh, roads would be brilliant in Lin here, actually. That would be a blessing. Particularly because you're the main land route from west to east in our nation. And you are only low tier roads. So if we can get you to build up, that'd be good. I don't know what Thorondor coward. thinks he's up to. Or Thorondir, sorry. But we Protect could do with him not being in our nation. Not waste words on you. Ah, Tirith Ride fell. We are going to need more troops into Adrahil's army, and we're going to need them soon. Gobertophilus is a better location for military because it's already the highest tier it can be, which means all you need is the governor's quarters, and you can get a good tier barracks up here. Uh, so I think we should do that. So we've got three things queued while we just fight off Harad, basically. Slay them. Jarir. The mm, Barun Raiders with their new visual. Yeah, go on then. Let's have a little fight against them. New visual and new unit card as well. Break their will. Let's try and use just our generals so that we don't lose any troops that can't replenish. Here, the hammerstroke will fall hardest. Now, remember, they are cavalry archers. Let's see how successfully our generals can defeat this army. Right, the Talonites are going to shatter that warband. Let's have a look at the Baron Raiders then. Their new visual design. I believe this one is created by Cowering Coma again. It looks very tasty indeed. Very nice crisp textures. Oh, very nice crisp textures actually, yeah. And got a very Eastern theme to it. 
Let's pause it. it. Makes it a lot easier to see them when they're running around. They've got cool looking shields. I'm a fan of a shield. Always a fan of a shield. That looks very tasty indeed. Uh, yeah, I think they look very nice. Very Eastern themed as well, aren't they? Um, which is good, really, because that's what Cand is based on. They're looking very tasty. For the glory of Numenor! Alright, the Talon Knights are moving in. Look at them in all their glory. Come on, boys. Oh, the Baron Raiders. Oh, Baron Raiders, that's such a bad play from you. That is not what you want to be doing. You are going to get massacred by the Talon Knights. The battle is very much in our favour. Oh, the they've made a... The Empire has made a critical error and the time for our attack has come. Has the Empire made a critical error or does the Emperor make a critical error? In any event, Money Bothans died to bring us this information. Charge in, give them a... The All the generals gone the already. Troops will lose their will oh, the fight. cavalrymen getting mopped up by the Royal Squad Guard. <laughs> oh, it's just so much fun playing this faction. They're like they're like a paladin, which, as you all know from the numerous and copious amounts of times Only I've talked about it, uh, which is the type of role-playing s character I play in basically any type of fantasy game. Dolan are like a paladin, the faction. Paladin, the faction. Behold how our cowardly foe runs. It's time to press the attack. They are the ultimate force of good in the world, particularly in my head cabin, of course, where Gondor is filled with squabbling nobles, as I've already mentioned. <laughs> A lovely little victory Be with only four losses. I welcome you sending piecemeal attacks against me, Harad, because I've got the ultimate setup. An elite ground force to anchor everyone in place, an elite archer to pepper them while we're getting near to them, and an elite cavalry unit to wipe them out when they are standing still. Prime targets for death. Market for death they are indeed. Watch for the enemy. Kill them all. Ah. Oh. Oh. Watch for the enemy. Captain of Gondor. We've destroyed them. Gobel Mirland is one that I always like to own because it's such a good city. But realistically, it's going to be a long time before it's of use to us. So we'll get the three things that we've got queued up built. And then we'll go from there. Let's see if Harad push into our lands again. I, as I say, I really don't want to fight Kand until we've got Harad and ideally the Ardenaim under sway. So if Harad can take Tirithoros, and I'm happy to leave them with Barad Han, um, with Tirithride as well. And then if we try and sort of go along the river and strike at their core, I think that's going to be my play. We probably do need to kill Thorondir though, because he is costing us um, in corruption. So Gobel Tophilas built, but that was the only one that could be that could afford to build. Uh, the mine's three turns away. Lin here, how much did you need? You need 5,100, and Atheland needs 4,125. So Atheland will build first. I probably should have attacked Thorondir, but I'm not going to. And this is also going to be the last turn, as that is going to be enough for today. So I can hop into the shower before my next engagement in 20 minutes' time. So that's going to be all you're going to get for this one. There will be a Humankind episode tomorrow, which is all the more interesting because Humankind has just released patch notes for their next big update. And they've also released the beta of their next big update. You can start playing with the changes for their next... Um, oh, there's a fly in here. For the next big update as soon as you like. If you are enjoying Humankind, you're welcome to do that if you are playing it. Uh, but anyway, so that will come tomorrow, and then there will be another Bree and another Dol Amroth at the end of the week. But until we speak again, dear friends, I hope you have enjoyed this episode. I hope you will enjoy the coming episodes. I hope you'll have a lovely day. And until we do speak again, Navayar Naden Pedemad Melunin, and farewell.